Okay, so welcome, welcome to those who are joining for the first time, welcome back to those that are coming back. Um, this is my Workshop Wednesday series. I go live once a week at the moment, that's probably going to change because it's very hard to sustain. Um, doing a pattern for people to sew along with me. So I'll sew it up live in front of you, you can ask me any questions that you need to, just pop them in the chat box and I will answer what I can. Um, yeah, it's pretty interactive, so please don't be shy. Chat to me, I ask questions, because it's just me staring at myself in a screen. <laughs> so anything to, you know, give me a bit of feedback is always nice. So if I do something and you're not too sure, ask me. But yes, we tonight we are sewing up the Waves and Wild over it alls. I've lost count of the amount of um, over it alls I have sewn, because I love this pattern. It is such a great pattern. It's something that my son lived in when he was young. Um, I made them for my daughter. Like, I just, I love them. They're such a great newborn gift. So tonight we're gonna do a size 00, which is six to 12 months with the snap placket. I wasn't going to, but someone in the Waves and Wild group uh, wanted to see how it was done. So we'll give it a go. Um, I've done it before. I'm just gonna see how we're going for time, but anyway. Uh, so we're doing the snap crap, snap crap, snap crotch placket. Um, I'm going to give these to one of my daughter's friends, little boys, and we're going to do the kanga pouch. So I use a projector to cut my pieces out. So I'm going to keep cutting. I've loaded them up. If you've got any projector questions, please let me know. I'm always happy to answer them. Projectors are a game changer in my opinion. They just really speed things up a lot um, you know you don't have to cut and like print and cut and stick and trace and it's just yeah all that sort of time wasted stuff you don't have to worry about so yeah so you just load up your pieces lay them out I have a big um, galvanized steel sheet under my mat so that these are just magnets it holds them down so I'm just cutting out my kanga pocket I'm choosing to do my kanga pocket in a contrasting fabric and then my main fabric is this which is this really nice uh, like boho kind of print uh, obviously in brown with like brown rainbows and stuff i got this from dizzy daisy i think i'm pretty sure dizzy daisy in perth i've had it for a while so i can't remember uh, yes it is there is a little bit of sort of work in getting it set up but there's a really great group called projectors for sewing um, there's an Australian version as well if you're in Australia, but the projectors for sewing is an international, um, you know, group and I really like them. They are full of knowledge, like even if you're not sure or you haven't bought yourself a projector yet, just join the group and be a bit of a lurker, you know, just lurk around, see what other people have set up and, um, yeah, you'll see sort of what other people have. I have an ultra short throw. If you want to see my setup, I've done a few videos, so you can either go on to my, my Insta videos or there's one in my um, on my YouTube as well. So yeah, you can see that, but I have an ultra short throw. I probably could get a ceiling mount now because I have a dedicated cutting space. However, the ultra short throws are really good if you've got limited space or you don't have a dedicated place to work, like a dedicated cutting table or sewing area. So you can pack them up and put them away. I've transported my projector to my in-laws like two and a half hours away. It's going to mark B on this for the back. Um, yeah, they're really good. So when you first set up, um, 
um, Amalo, I hope I've said that right, has asked how you get it scaled to the correct size. When you first get it, you have to calibrate it, uh, which isn't as hard as it kind of sounds. Again, join that group. There's heaps and heaps of knowledge on there. They can walk you through how to do it. I watched a video by Daily Sews and stuff. Um, she does like an unboxing and it was incredible. Like she was really, really knowledgeable. I'm just, one of the good things about the projector is, so I'm trying to get pattern placement on this. I want to have like, I want the Kanga pouch so it's not really impacting on too much of the pattern. So I reckon if I have it about there, the pouch is gonna go here. Yeah, I reckon that'll be all right. Even if I bring it across a little bit. Um, yeah, the Daily Sews and stuff, she has a whole series on her YouTube about sort of from unboxing it. Oh, it's not gonna quite work. That's right, we'll bring it across a little bit. Um, yeah, she has a whole series on from unboxing to setting it up. And once you kind of understand it and get it right, like I can calibrate my projector pretty quickly. I don't need to because it's a fixed place. But for example, I know that when I project my PDF pattern at 15.9% in Adobe, it is 100% on my table. So yeah, so it's really, really amazing, the projectors. I think it's really upskilled my sewing game just because I've not been as daunted to try new patterns, like, and particularly kids' patterns. I mean, how often do you, you know, trace out your kid's size and you make one thing and then you blink and they're in the next one? So, yeah, it's really handy in that respect. Um, no, I haven't tried electric scissors, actually. Maybe I should. Can you just use them on a normal, like, cutting mat? Or do you need to get something different. I've not really looked into electric scissors, but perhaps I should. So I've done my back and front. I pre-cut my um, leg pieces because I was trying to sort of speed things up a little bit. So now I just need to cut my lining pieces, which I reckon I might get out of my scraps that I've had before. Yeah, I've not tried electric scissors. Maybe I should. So now I'm just going to cut my lining pieces. But the overdolls is quite a quick pattern, especially if you don't do the snap placket. I reckon I can probably sew overdolls up in like, I don't know, half an hour, not even. Okay, that's our lining done. Let's do the other side. And this is our last piece we need to cut. So I will be doing something a little bit different from the pattern in this. Um, just the snap crotch so I'll explain more when I get to it but yeah I do mine a little bit different um, this is the back line Uh, what time is it there? What time is it there? Um, it is 8.42 in the evening. Where are you from? I am very interested. Yeah, if you let me know below, those that have just jumped on, I'd love to know where you're all from. I know Waves and Wild particularly has a kind of international 
um, cohort, I guess, because I think Sarah was originally from or spent time in in um, England. Okay, I've got all my pieces. So we have our let's check front, which actually I'm. Um, Another good thing about the projector, so I've got my piece. I did put on the back where the Kanga pouch is, but that's not really going to help me. So I'm just going to line up my piece again and just gently mark in where my Kanga pouch should be. So I might end up moving that down a little bit just because it's going to be right on the rainbow. But yeah, how easy is that? Oh, Missouri. There you go. Definitely come in. Hobart. Hello, hello, Sydney. Oh, the USA. Oh, that's Armelo. Yeah, definitely. Sewing will help put you to sleep. Hopefully it's not my voice that puts you to sleep. Um, okay, so I'll turn the projector off so you can see. So we've got our front piece, back piece, these are our lining pieces. So we've got our front lining, back lining. We've got our Kanga pouch, which I cut out. I think that must be the bottom. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, well, we'll just completely cover that. That'll actually work really well though. Uh, we've got our snap pieces, which I already had cut. And then I'm doing my leg cuffs in rib knit because I just really like rib knit for like cuffs. I think it's really soft on the skin um so yeah so i've got this this tan colored rib i think i got this from clover and co or there's also um frankie bear fabric also okay i'm just gonna put my computer away so what we need to do first i might prepare all the pieces so i will need to just add a little bit of interfacing to each bit of my where the snaps are going to go so I'm just going to cut a little bit of interfacing it's probably not enough but we'll make it work I think for the straps I'm going to do plastic snaps because I can sort of color match them and for the snap like the crotch placket I think I'm going to do I just need one more little bit uh, I think I'm going to do metal because I find metal are just a little bit less noticeable I'll do that. Go to fabric. Mm, that's really hard. My go to. I don't know if I've got a go to sewing pattern. So I'll just move you over here. You get to see my messy rent lounge room in the background. So now I'm just going to put on my interfacing. So I'm just attaching this to the. What are these called? Straps. So the interfacing I'm using is knit interfacing. So I'm um, iron on, it's got a soft side and a rough side. The rough side is the sticky side. So ideally you shouldn't have steam because if your iron is too hot, it will just melt it. And it's better to press it on rather than sort of rub back and forth. So I'm just gonna press it on one trust me I've burnt many in interfacing onto my iron the other thing you can do is use a press cloth or just another piece of fabric um, some people use like baking paper you can use baking paper between your iron and the interfacing or whatever it is you're I'm just gonna cut that a little bit um, yeah, baking paper to sort of save your iron. 
um, learning book cover. Yeah, I made this one. <laughs> it was actually a part of the Aussie 52 week sewing challenge. So if you're in Australia, there's a really cool sewing challenge that two ladies run and every week you've got a different challenge. You don't have to do them week by week. You can sort of do it monthly. Um, and I did that last year. I started this year, but I've just been too busy. So is there an interface infinite wizard? Well, um, woven interfacing won't have any give. So it's often used in button plackets and um, shirt collars to help it sort of stand up, like give it that little bit of stiffness. Whereas knit interfacing will be used in like a zipper area or this has, this still lets it, like I've got interfacing on, it still lets it stretch a bit. Whereas woven interfacing wouldn't do that. So there's a little bit of, um, what's the word, like debate over, you know, if you need to use a knit interfacing. I think it really depends. I probably could have got away with a woven interfacing for these because the straps don't really stretch that much. Um, but for something like a zip, like a knit zipper, I would always use a knit interfacing. Okay, so I've put all my interfacing pieces on. I'm now going to prepare my Kanga Pocket. So for my Kanga Pocket, I need to press down, I'm going to put the steam back up again, the sides. So there's a kind of two parts to the Kanga Pocket. So I'm folding over my two sides. Probably can't see too well. My pleasure. Um, it'll be on my YouTube as well, so you'll be able to see it. I'm glad I helped put you to sleep. Um, uh, yeah, there's knit interfacing. So you can obviously get it from, if you're in Australia, you can get it from Spotlight. Um, I also like to get mine from Ebony Craft in Ringwood, but they do ship inter, interstate, yeah, interstate as well. So they're really handy and they're usually cheaper than spotlight as well and I'm sure if you looked in your country's like local store you can just ask for it okay we now need to stitch along these edges so I've got this is the back side and I need to stitch these side pieces down. These are the bits that the little hands go in and for a four month old, he doesn't need pockets, but you know, it looks cute. So we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over to my sewing machine. Um, non woven. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's what it would be called. To be honest, I'm not sure. I just buy, I say stretchy interfacing. <laughs> Okay, so, sorry, my machine, like, I'm not doing a lot on this machine, so I'm not going to set it up properly because there's no point. I'll be doing most of it on my overlocker or serger if you are in another country. So I'm just putting my black in... Now on the sides, I'm going to do a zigzag stitch, but I think to put it on, I'll do a straight stitch. We'll wait and see. Maybe I'll just do, maybe I'll just do a straight stitch actually. I've changed my mind. I'm just going to do a straight stitch the whole way. So I've got my straight stitch. I'm going to go a three. So I just want to sew straight down there.
Now I'm not bothering about back stitching for this because it's going to be um, enclosed. These seams are going to be enclosed, so I don't have to worry about trying to finish these seams. But when I sew the rest down, I definitely will. Right, the next bit I'm going to bring you back over here. I might actually put you back up here. Sorry, there's a little bit of twing and froing, but it'll make sense. So now I need to put my pocket onto my front piece. Just give it a quick press again. So I've got my piece here. And what I need to do also, while I remember, is I now need to fold down these top bits. I'll just clip these bits off. And press it down. So these, this is where it's going to be joined or attached to our front piece. So I'll just fold that over about 3 eighths of an inch or 10 mil one centimeter give that a good press and then i need to fold in the side give that a good press and my other side and the bottom We've got all our pieces, all our sides are now looking nice and done. And now what I want to do, hopefully you can see, is attach this to my front piece. So I can get it looking nice and straight and where I want it. I'm really happy with that black actually. I was a bit unsure whether I would like it, but. I think it's going to look really good. Now you could pin this on. That's what most people do. However, I sometimes find that's really hard. It like moves while you're trying to sew. So the other thing you can do is get double-sided washable tape. So you can just get this. I think I got some on Amazon. If you're in Australia, so Unique sell it. Um, uh, who else sells it? Ebony Craft, I think, do. Um... Uh, spotlight salad like there's so many different places you can get it but it is double-sided washable tape so it can be called quilters tape or um, there's a few different a few different names but basically what it is it's double-sided tape but it dissolves when you put it in the wash and I use it when I'm installing any of my zips I use it when I'm um, often if I'm trying to close up like a, an inside hem you can use it to make sure it's going to stay down so this is just instead of using pins so now you peel off the back not normally this difficult more fingers so you peel off the back and you've got your two, you can put as much or as little on as you want. I cut my fingernails the other day so I can't do it as well. Okay, so we've got our two strips and now you can sort of put it on Make sure I'm happy with the placement. Gently press it down. Make sure I'm happy with the placement. Press it down. And that's there. So now I know I can stitch along there and it's not gonna move. Like it's, it's just, you know, I can jiggle it around, do whatever. It's just a little bit more sturdy, I guess, than pins. Might just move this a tiny bit. So I'm being pedantic. 
Okay. So now I'm going to bring you back and we're going to stitch this to our front piece. And then we can get started sewing it up. So for this bit, I am going to back stitch because it's the start of my, like I'm trying to keep it there. I had another friend use this to keep her pocket in place, like a patch pocket, a little triangle patch pocket on her son's um, breast pocket because she kept getting, it was puckering and moving and this worked for treats. So. I've heard of some people using it under their seams when they're trying to twin needle as well, like to stop it puckering. I've not tried it myself, but apparently it helps work. So now it's all fixed. Just, yeah. Hopefully that's a bit clearer. So yeah, so we've got our nice little kanga patch. I'm just going to give this another little quick. Um, no, it doesn't gum up the needle. Not that I've experienced anyway. Pop quiz for those watching. How often should you change your needle? I would like people to put in the comments below. How often should you change your needle? I'm interested in who, on what your answers are. And how often do you actually do it? So yes, so I'm all, that's all done now. Okie doke. After every project, who else is game to say more than I do? Yeah, Erin, okay. Um, walking foot. Yeah, a lot more often, six to eight hours. Oh, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, so the correct answer is, yeah, neither do I. The correct answer is after every project or sort of six to eight hours of sewing. I don't really know anyone that does, and I don't often either. However, I do try to change it pretty regularly because um, it really can make a big difference. Like, if you're ever having problems, like with skip stitches or you know, just issues with your machine, re-thread it and change the needle. I reckon eight out of 10 times that's the issue. Oh, look at my hair, it's going crazy. Um, because if it's not punching through the fabric cleanly, it can really affect the way your machine is picking up the thread and pushing it through the fabric. So try to change your fabrics. Um, there was another question, a walking foot. So I don't I have in the past but I use my overlocker a lot more now so I don't really need to use my walking foot however if I had a really thin fabric or I was going to be using it constantly I would use a walking foot so I have used a walking foot in the past and it can make a difference so yeah if you are having trouble with what with knit fabrics and you don't have an overlocker or you just want to try it yeah, definitely use your walking foot. You don't even have to take your walking foot off. Uh, best needles to use. Really depends on the fabric you're using, the garment you're sewing. There's a really good episode on Love to Sew. That's a podcast. Um, I'll try to remember to link it like in my stories about needles and how they use. I would like to do my own little tutorial about needles as well and like a sew quick tip type thing. I just haven't had time, so... Um, I generally use a stretch needle for when I'm using stretch and a universal for using woven, but universal is really universal. So the only time I really make sure I've changed my needles is um, if I'm sewing soft shell or leather, like uh, vinyl, I'll use a Microtex. So yes, but back to this. So we have our 
front pieces. We're going to get our front lining and line them up. I now am going to pretend, oh, I'll, I'll pin it. I don't normally, because I'm trying to teach you all how good things, I'll just do a couple of clips. So I also tend to use clips instead of pins when I'm working with knits because it doesn't mark the fabric like needles do. So clips are really handy. So we're going to sew up here, there, around, there and around. And then on our back piece, we're going to do the same. So we're going to lay our lining and our back piece right sides together. And we're going to clip our pieces, which I wouldn't normally do, but do as I say, not as I do. Um, and again, we're going to sew. I'll fudge that later. Up, 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 up. So I'm going to bring you over here. Come for a walk with me. Ooh, you dropped. Sorry, everybody. Hope no one's getting um, like seasick. Whoops. Hang on. Which way am I? Okay, I'm now at my overlocker. Hello, overlocker. The next tip I'm going to give is, so the inside of my fabric is white and I've got white thread in my machine, but I'm actually going to change out the left needle to a brown. So if I'm using colored fabrics, I will often change my left needle to the color of the fabric, fabric that I'm using. So when those seams pull apart, you see the brown, not the white. So that's my little tip that I do. <coughs> so I'll just I don't know what's going to be better for you to see is back here okay like is that good for everybody so I'm just going to change out my brown to brown Who here is afraid of their overlocker? I love mine. It's really good to try and get to know your overlocker very well. Yes, I also have a cover stitch. It's a baby lock euphoria. It almost cost me my firstborn and I probably would have paid it. <laughs> no, not really. Um, it was quite a pricey machine, but I saved my little heart out and I sold a whole heap of stuff on eBay and like really, really saved hard because I used to have a cover pro, do you know me cover pro? And it was okay, but I just had heard such good things about the baby lock and will not go back. Like it's just such an incredible machine so for anybody that's thinking about a cover stitch honestly save your pennies and go for a baby lock over anything else but anyway what are we saying me for did I ask a question I'm a bit <laughs> sorry okay so now I am going to sew all the way around this. This is my front piece. I know because it's got its little tanga pouch, which I have actually sewn the tanga pouch to the back once before. So my poor little boy had a pouch on his bum, a bum pouch. Which I didn't realize till the end. Oh, who's scared of their overlocker? Yes, yeah, sorry. I got some. No, get to know your overlocker. Like I could thread my overlocker blindfolded, I reckon. Well, maybe not quite blindfolded. That's a bit of an overstatement. But I used to have to any time I rethread it, I would have to rethread the whole thing. Like I couldn't just thread one, you know, thread at a time. If the upper looper went out, I'd have to do all of it. Um, you know, or if the white needle ran out of thread, I'd have to do all of it. But 
I now am very confident on my color that I can thread any any of them at any point in any any order, and um, it works. And I just I just love my overlocker. If you want, like I'm happy to do a how to thread your overlocker video. So if that is something of interest to people, just let me know below. I'll add it to my list of things to do. Okay. So we've sewn our front lining piece to our front body piece. Now we're going to sew our back lining piece to our back piece. Carly, I know you are a friend of your overlocker. Carly's my friend and she'll ask me questions. And before, before she's even asked me, it's usually I've already re-thread it because nearly the first thing I'll always say to her is re-thread it. Pull it out and re-thread it because that is often the problem with overlockers as well. It's not in the tension disc properly. So sometimes you need to thread, um, floss your thread into the discs, which basically just means grabbing, grabbing each end of the thread, like here, and floss it like floss it between the tension discs. But yeah, I did a one day course on overlocking and I was pretty confident before I did it, but it really sort of gave me extra confidence as well. They taught us how to, you know, um, identify when your machine's balanced, like when the, the tensions are all right and... I still don't know everything. I definitely do not proclaim to know everything, but I am more confident. Okay, so now we have our back pieces attached to our lining. You can finish this edge as well if you want. However, being a knit fabric, you can just do it. You can leave it raw. Like it's not gonna fray. It's not gonna do anything. So you can leave it raw if you want. I'm going to finish mine because I just like it finished, but you don't have to. I'm actually on the back going to add a little label because it is a gift. So I have these little labels that I got from AliExpress. Um, they're just, they've got my business name, say it's handmade, have some basic care instructions and my social media information and then I just get I've just got a permanent marker that's meant for writing on, oh no meant for writing on fabrics and I just write the size so this is a size zero zero and how's that gonna work so yeah I'll do it like that I have to think backwards because I'll show you in a minute. Then I'll finish off this side. Okay, so now I'm going to clip all my little threads off. You can give the corners a tiny little clip as well because we are close to pushing them out. But I just clip all my threads off. Off the straps, that is. So I've done that. Get the back, just give it a little bit of a clip. Okay, and now I might actually see if I can so it's easier to see. I'm going to lay my back piece down. Can everybody see this okay? So this is my back piece. 
because it's longer and I also wrote B on it, the back. I'm going to lay my back piece down and fold up my lining piece so it's sitting like this. I'm then going to get my front piece and lay it with the facing side, so the printed sides together. Fold up my little lining piece and line them up. Now I'm going to take note mainly of my seams, my side seams here. They're the first thing that I want to like align because that's where it lines up under the arm. So I'm gonna line them up and put a clip. On the other side, line it up and put a clip. Now for me personally, I almost don't care if these lining pieces don't match up. They don't, I don't really care about that. The thing that I really want to look nice is my join at the underarm. So I will always make sure I clip and align those pieces above anything else. If it's too long or too short in the legs, I can adjust it. If it's too long or too short here, I can adjust it. But I really like to have those side seams matched up. So I've matched those up. I'm now going to attach them. So I'll bring it over here. And so you want to make sure your clips are out of the way, the straps. So all the way down. to the other side so yeah my side on this side doesn't really line up I don't care I would rather have the side aligned because no one's gonna be really looking at the lining anyway should look like this a little bit funky looking so we've got our right sides together it's lined up that way now bits like that so now I'm going to clip these off I'm really actually having a moment of doubt whether I'm doing this right it'd be pretty funny if I just led you all up the garden path now I'm going to turn it the right way So it's a good idea to have like a knitting needle or some kind of pusher out a tool. What are we going to call that? A corner, corner turner? I don't know what the official name is. So we're pushing those out. This, the straps will be a little bit stiff because we've got our interfacing on there. But that's what we want. Oh, look at that, see? So pretty, very nice. What about my other side? Oh, not quite as good. Not quite as good, but acceptable. I'll accept it. And you know, the person receiving this, I'm sure, isn't going to be looking at the the seams. We're always much harsher on ourselves than we than the people are that we gift to you, I find anyway. Particularly if they don't know how to sew. Most people are just so blown away that you created something. They're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And I love that feeling. I love it. I sent one of my friends a little, the summer romper actually, that I sewed up. I sent that to her and she loved it. So it was very nice. So we're gonna Turn that the right way out. Tuck it 
ta-da! That is the top part of our romper. So starting to come together now. We push those bits down. Now the reason I sewed that up was because I'm going to, I'm just gonna run that through my machine at the end just to sort of, like just on my normal machine and just run a straight stitch across there so that the label sits down. But that's that. So I will come and give this a really good press now. So I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see again. There we go. Can you see? Good. Yeah. So I'm going to give this a really, really good press. Because we're done with the top part now other than the snaps. Has anyone got any questions up till now? Am I going too fast, too slow? Just right. Okay. So, I'll flip the camera. I'm going to put it over here actually. So, this is what our romper looks like now. Now, if I wasn't doing the snap crotch, I would turn this back the ins the wrong way, like right sides together. I'd sew that up, put the cuffs on, snaps on, and I'd be done. But that's not what I'm doing. We are doing the snap crotch. So in the book or in the instructions, it tells you to attach the snap placket and then do your cuffs so it's sort of one big open thing. But this time I'm actually going to try having my cuffs on and it'll be a bit different to that. So this could go hor horribly wrong. Let's wait and see. You know, who doesn't love a bit of suspense? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, snap piece, fold it in half. I'm actually just going to give it a quick press just so it kind of stays together somewhat. I find knit fabric never really presses flat though, like unless you starch it or put interfacing on it. I've got a feeling it does say to interface this, but we're not going to. And then I will find the midpoint. So I'm just going to fold it in half. We might end up going a little bit over an hour today, but you have to go, you have to go, otherwise you can stay and chat. Jethro, I think it's just dad home. So, Jethro, I like to find my middle point and then I'm going to attach it to my middle point here. And then I think this is going to work here. Then we'll sew it on. And then I'll put, yeah, all right. We're just going to roll with it. So in the instructions, it says to um, sew that off, turn it out and do it and attach it. But I'm going to do it this way. You would attach your cuffs first. I'm really doubting myself now, but you know what? If I stuff it up, then you guys learn too. So I'm just going to fold this in half again. Find the middle point again. I 
think the next pattern I'm going to do is going to be a women's one as well. So I've done a lot of kids' patterns. I'm ready to do um, I do not like that. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm thinking the Ali and Mac tray bell in peplum. Let's take this all back over here. It goes to a 12, I think. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it goes up to a 12. So I'm just going to attach this now. I think I'm going to have to do a couple of these lives on Facebook as well. Quite a few people don't have Instagram. Is there anybody that has Instagram but not Facebook? Just no do tax side seems of lining so it doesn't come up. Um, Cloverly Stitches has just asked, Cloverly in Stitches has just asked if I tack the side seams. I should. I think it tells you to in the instructions. Um, I don't always, like, to be honest, I just forget. But you've reminded me that, especially because it's a gift, I probably should. So now we've got our pieces, like we've attached our snap pieces. So what it does is they attach like this. So the snaps go there and then... It looks like that. So you could top stitch this if you want, like it would look nicely, but I'm not going to. Now what I'm going to do, because I want to attach the cuffs, is I'm going to f attach my, like fold over where it would attach. Like if I had a press stud here, this is what it would look like. And I'm going to put a clip here. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side, making sure that I've got whatever I've done. If I've gone back to front that way, I need to go back to front this way. So what do I want to do? No, I want the front to overlap the back. I'll explain in a second. So I want the front to overlap. So we've got our pieces and I want to stand up on the inside leg. This is where the snaps are going to go. So I've got it so that the snaps will, the front will sit over the back and you'll snap it up and you can go in that. So we've got, it'll look like that. I'm now going to attach the cuffs so that you have to put your leg in the way it was in the book and I've done it that way too the whole thing snaps open so you've got like this open bit I've actually got one two seconds just remembered that I have I folded one in my son's washing today so this is a size three I think 
and I did a snap crotch in his and this is the way the cuff's done. So the cuff is attached, then you put your snap placket on so that when you open it, it opens all the way around. Oh, come on. And it's big and gapy like this, which is fine. But I just kind of like the idea of the cuff being together and then this bit being open. So you've still got to put your foot through. I just don't like this bit being a bit gapy. Um, so yeah, that's why we're doing it a little bit different on this one. Just to give it a go. You know, each to their own. And I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I'm just giving you a different way. So the cuff pieces, I fold in half, right sides together, and sew along the short edge. Where's my other cuff piece gone? There it is. Did it make sense what I said about the way we're going to do it? And hopefully gave you a good visual because I had the one that I could show you. So then once we've sewn them together, we go wrong sides together. Yeah, like you just, you put their foot in. But anyway each to their own. Some people might like it being completely open. Maybe it's easier with like a newborn. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> so I've got my two cuff pieces like this and I'm now going to attach them. So I'm going to, if you're a little bit new to sewing or you know it's a bit difficult, you could baste across here but because I'm a rebel, without a cause, I'm just going to put it on. So I, I am going to line up my inside seam to my, you know, inside leg. And clip it down. And then kind of space it out a bit. So it's important when you're sewing cuffs to make sure you get all three raw edges. So you've got the two raw edges of the cuff that are folded up and the raw edge of the leg or the um, sleeve. Okay, so now I'm going to start to sew. not just my concentration face. Moment of truth. Got a thread. Yeah, that's going to look good. So, as you can see, my cuff is there, and then I've got my snap placket that will still open. So, I think that's going to work well. And it's still like it just gives the leg a little bit more structure, I think. So, we do the other side, and then we're pretty much almost done. We've just got to. I don't know if I put my other. Oh, there it is. Um, just got to do the snaps and we're done. So, if we didn't have to do, like, if I wasn't explaining stuff and. Yeah, we would have had it done in an hour, I reckon. So, again, I'm just lining up my inside seam to my inside snap crotch area and I'm going to sew that on and like I said you know if if you're a little bit unsure definitely just baste it 
can even hand baste it. It really wouldn't take much to just chuck a couple of hand stitches in there. Oh, that's my face again. Voila, not quite as neat as the other side. It moved a little bit while I was sewing, but that's okay. So that's all the sewing we need to do. That is our romper, or our overalls, all sewn. So now all I need to do is add my snaps here and my snaps here. So I'm gonna bring you back over here. Lots of toing and froing, isn't it? Hopefully you can still hear me. I just touched the volume button. So I'll lay it out so you can see. So yeah, so this is our romper all done. I just need to do my snaps here and my snaps here. I'm just going to have a quick drink. So what someone was asking before, I can't remember, I think it was Clover Lee in Stitches, whether I tack the side down. So I might just do a little stitch in the ditch here afterwards to stop that lining coming up. I don't, I haven't really ever had it be a problem, but you know, it is a gift, so maybe I'll just take extra care. So I'm going to grab... my ring sets might be black black yeah I'm gonna do black on their legs Okay, so I'm going to do brown on here. Two. Now I have a bench press. What have I got in at the moment? <clears throat> So I might do the leg snap first. Yeah, how good are those containers? They're so good. Because um, I think that's the pre um, the die set I've got in at the moment. So now what I do is I get an awl, a tailor's awl, which I bet I don't have one up here because I took it to school. Hang on. <clears throat> I had school on the weekend, so I took all of my pieces. We're doing pattern making. So I get my tailor's all, which is a super, super sharp, pointy, stabby thing. And what I do is I will pierce my fabric. So I'll go somewhere in the, like where I'm thinking, push it through, please be careful of your fingers. And what happens is it'll leave a mark there and it'll leave a mark on the underneath. So now I know exactly where to put both my, um, what are they called? Snaps to get them to line up. 
So I'll go along and I'll do the next one. Maybe about there. Don't stab yourself though, it really hurts. Got another one here. I've marked all my bits now. Now I can put my snaps on, my studs. So like I said, I'm using metal in the legs and I'm going to use plastic on the straps. I've had a lot of trouble with the metal ones in the past, but that's because I was trying to use the hammer-in mm. ones and they're awful. Like they're just really, really awful. Um, I got a snap press from, uh, sorry, a die set from, um, Green Beans Australia and it is so much easier. So that's what it looks like. So I probably pushed a bit hard on that one. Uh, so... It's really easy to remember which side is which as well. The female side is inny and the male side is outy. So yeah. <laughs> also with these, try really hard not to get it wrong. Like if you've ever tried to um get plastic snaps off, metal ones are harder. So that's what it will look like when it's all done. You just pull it apart. Beautiful. So I'll just continue putting these on. If anyone has any questions about this, please let me know. If anyone has any questions about any of it, now's a good time while I am doing the snappy bits. Hopefully people found this one informative. I know we've gone a little bit over time. I try to keep them to an hour because I just, I don't want people to get bored listening to me that whole time. Because I know I can probably jabber on a little bit. Okay, where's my next fan? I put someone to sleep before. Uh, so this is actually um, stitched, tagged, us. how did I change the die so quick? So this is actually a universal die for the metal, um, the metal snaps. So green beans have a two-piece die set or a three-piece die set. So the two-piece die set is the interchangeable. So it works for the top and bottom. The three-piece was, yeah, like $2 cheaper or something. Um, but, yeah, you had to change out. Oh, did I put the top in? Yeah, I think I did, didn't I? No, maybe I didn't. Oh, I must have, I can't push it in. Um, oh, that's lucky. You've really got to think about where it's going. Is that the... Yeah, it is. Um, for my plastic snaps, I actually have two. I have two dies, two presses, sorry. You will have seen I've got two. Um... I got really sick of having to change out the dies all the time. So yeah, I just bought one for male, one for female. And it's really easy. But for my metal ones, yeah, I've just got the one. 
and it's actually incredibly handy because yeah I can go from male to female without having to change anything after feeling the what's it called like trying to get the snaps off I kind of do wish that I had interfaced the snap like the snap crotch placket just on one side it'll be okay but it definitely could have done with some extra stability so that's that piece that's that snap crotch done so yeah like I said I just did my cuffs a little bit differently so that it is combined instead of completely open so that's the completely open and you've basically got like it just it doesn't go all the way up whereas this has got just a little bit of you know stability to it I think so I think going forward I will always do that now to do my plastic ones so that's my male What's that one? It's the rivets. It's the six mil. That's the female. So I will change all that out. We'll do the nails. But I'm really glad that I bought my bench press. It, it does give a much more sturdy finish like it really really secures them on there so the only thing that I do have to change over is the bottom plate but I waited until they had a sale and I picked up my second press for like 30 bucks or something so it was pretty cheap So, do I want it like that or like that? I think I want the back one to come over. So, again, line it up where I want it. Poke the all through. Poke the all through. I like to do my mail bit on top. So, take it to my mail. Done. Mail. Done. Now I just swap my bottom plate over. And then it's like that. So this is to go at the back. When I was doing a YouTube tutorial this week or last week, I got all the way to the end. I put on my snap plaque, like my, my snaps, and I did it the wrong way. I should share the blooper. It's pretty funny. I'm like getting to that. And now we att and, uh, attach it. And I'm like, no, we don't. So I did it wrong. Mm. So I had to pause and then painstakingly get rid of it. And re refilm and edit it after. <sighs> okay, look at that. Alright, I've got a question which I'll answer in a minute. But look at that. We have done our overalls. We did it in one hour. What's that? F 20. An hour 20? Not quite. If I hadn't been talking as much as I did, it would have been quicker. So how cute are those? Oh, so cute. So we did it with ribbed cuffing. I'm going to make just a really quick tea to go under it to give to the mum as well. We've got our snap placket so that we can change nappies without having to pull them down. That was it. So Fraley Fabric Creations are so you shorten the placket pieces since... No, I didn't. I didn't adjust anything because... How do I explain this? 
I didn't have to. I didn't have to adjust anything. It's just, let me see. Goes all the way down. No, I didn't have to adjust anything. I just, I probably could have, you're right, I could have, because it does go all the way down. So, you know, I ended up chopping a little bit off. But I just didn't have to stretch it as far on my pieces, I guess you would say. So, yeah, you could take some out, but because you had to stretch it slightly to fit anyway, it worked. So I didn't have to bother because it works. But, yes, you could take some off if you wanted. But that's that. If you've got any questions, as always, you can DM me. I don't think it keeps the questions from the live. So, yeah, I can't remember all the things I said I would link either. I might go back and try and work it out. But if there was something that I said I would tell you and you're waiting for me to do, just DM me and I will let you know. I'll pop this on my YouTube as well, so make sure you subscribe to that. It's just someone tell Australia. Um, next week depends with the holidays I'll see how I go but the next one I'm going to do is the Ali and Mac Trey Bell so um I think I've done a blog on it I've got a aff link if you want to purchase it but it's such a good one so hopefully you learned something I actually love hearing if people get value out of this so don't pop it in the comments because it'll wipe it but if you dm me what you learned that would be amazing so have a good night, everybody, and yeah, bye.